Okay, good evening, football fans, and uh, what a night for football. Got a good wind blowing here, and uh, great night for football. A little chilly for the fans, but uh, football players love this kind of stuff. So. Well, you know, it's fall season, it's football, and this is kind of expected. Sooner or later, we have this type of weather. When you look back at the beginning of the season, those hot temperatures, we were playing in like, you know, 85, 90 degree temperature. I know they are looking forward to a little bit cooler weather. And getting ready to kick off the second of their Patriot League uh, play, play game tonight with Sterling will be in town to play the Brush Beat Diggers. And so um, both teams coming in with a lot of a lot of excitement, um, knowing that this game is really important and really important in, as far as it goes in Patriot League play and securing a spot at the end of the season, hopefully a uh, playoff spot if at all possible. So it's a very important key game tonight for both teams, but specifically for Brush Beat, the Brush Beat Diggers as they came off their first win last week in league play by beat, defeating Fort Lupton 25-14, to 14, I believe it was. 25-15. 25-15. So, yeah. anyway. Okay. It looks like we got the uh, – well, we're about ready for that starting lineup. The Beat Digger starting lineup is brought to you by Equitable Savings and Loan. Mobile banking on the go makes banking easier for you when you're on the go. Check it out today, Equitable Savings and Loan. The starting lineup for tonight's Brush Beat Diggers. A senior, number 10, Jade Queen. A freshman at quarterback, Alejandro Maltos Garcia. A junior, tight end defensive back, Luke Seawald. Junior running back, Nick Wellen. Senior running back, Isaac Morales. Senior offensive line, Nathaniel Miner. Senior offensive lineman, Josiah Fuentes. Senior offensive line, Chase Barnett. Senior offensive line Michael Nichols and senior offensive lineman Thomas Metlin. By taking a look at that, Rob, and just listing those last five guys, key important figures in an offense in a football team, but specifically on the offensive line, all seniors. So, as the looking for the leadership, having that uh, experience with those guys has definitely been a plus this year. But I'll tell you what, as we start looking towards the future, we're going to have to replace a, five of those guys at the starting lineup. So these younger guys are going to have to get themselves some playing time. But for right now, we're just worried about the starting guys here and getting ready to get this football game underway. And we've got uh, our captains tonight for the Beat Diggers, Zach Gonzalez-Rutherford, or Rutherford Gonzalez, and uh, Jesse McDonald. And for Sterling, uh, sorry, I can't see the numbers out there. <laughs> but brought my binoculars. I still don't know if we can see them. Uh, why they would put those silver numbers on there, I have no idea. But even with the great lighting here at the Brush Digger Dome, or <laughs> Digger Dome. <laughs> Beat Digger Frank, Stadium. Beat Digger Stadium. <laughs> Frank Mercer Press Box. And that's where we sat. And we're just about to kick it off. It's uh, 49 to kick it away. And we're underway. And the ball's going to be picked up around to 20, coming up this side on the near side and hit out of bounds. And I think that's Jade Queen on the carry. He'll be out to the 30. And, of course, we got all kinds of rosters and numbers, but we have no 49 for the Sterling Tigers. But that's who kicked it away. There's 58 out there to plug it up. Drew, Drew Book. Is one of the uh, starters for the Sterling Tigers. Okay, B Diggers come out. One wide receiver far to the right. Double tight ends. And whoop, right up the middle goes well in for about three yards. Queen was flexed out here to the near side, but that's all right. It's going to be second down and seven for the B Diggers. Just underway. No score. See how good your eyes out are out there on those uh, numbers. Colton, Colton yeah, they're, Chalice, they're pretty tough. defensive end here on the near side. Avery Pace, a corner to the near side. Might be Dominic Cordono, 32. A hand off the right side to Isaac, and he's going to pick up about two yards. He's going to be out across the uh, 35. Let's set it down at 36. Third down and four for the beat diggers. Ball just shot just this side, just uh, 
just over the 35-yard line instead of the 36-yard line. Ron Elbow along with Rob Hastings on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. It's 10 minutes and 46 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Hunter Dunn brings in a play. He'll flex out far to the right side. Peter is headed north. And we've got a little confusion here, and I think the beaters are going to call timeout. We had guys moving all over the place. And yeah, looking to the sidelines here, Coach Schwent had put his hands up for a timeout right away just to gather their thoughts. I know there's probably something he didn't see that he liked or the formation that was set up at that time, so he's having a little conversation with them, gather their thoughts, get themselves focused here because this is a very important third down in this opening series of the game. You know, the brush gets the ball on the opening kickoff, and you want to be able to sustain drives and keep yourself going. You don't want to have not convert on third down here, turn the ball over early in this game, and give uh, Sterling any kind of momentum. Okay, Lance Swint out with his players. Gets the play straightened out. Sterling Tigers coached by Rob Busamonte. Okay, we'll put Hunter Dunn to the far side. Queen here to the near side. Dunker should be the tight end to the right. So he's to the near side here. Backs move up. And... Underneath handoff, straight up the middle, goes well and driving, driving, driving. <laughs> he should have been tackled at the 38, and he's going to end up almost to the 45-yard line. Got behind the big guys, kept his feet churning. We'll call it the uh, the uh, just 44. Short of the 44, yeah, just 44-yard line, and well, a great job by the part of of uh, for. For Nick Wellen to be just, he got it. It was a straight ahead dive, an inside trap or an inside trap there, and he just kept his feet moving. The offensive line did a great job of just powering straight ahead. He was surrounded by Tigers, he just didn't bring him down. Okay, B Digger set to go. And hand off to the near side, and they're we're breaking into the three and across the 50 down to the 34. Let's see, we'll see where they mark it. They're going to go down to the 33 yard line. Huge pickup for the. Beat diggers. That was by Morales. Isaac Morales on the carry, right up the gut. That was just power of football right there. Beat diggers right back out here. Queen to the near side. Flexed out. And hand off to the left side. Breaking free for about six or seven yards. Another nice run by the beat diggers. Here comes Morales Isaac on the Morales carry. Isaac Morales again on the carry for a pickup of about seven. Almost eight. Call it uh, second and long seven from the 25-yard uh, line. Ball's right on the nose. Of the nose of the ball's right on the 25. Queen to the far right. Hunter Dunn to the near side. Alondro under center is going to hand it too well into the right side. He's going to have a first down inside the 20. Right at the 20-yard line. Peter just moving fast and quick right off the ball. Kind of Sterling hasn't penetrated hardly at all. Not sure who that nose tackle is, but he's a pretty good-sized boy. Be moving him out of the way. Okay, the opening Queen kick to the far kick. side. Yeah. And hand off to the left side here again. Not much this time. That's for Wellen. He's going to pick up maybe a yard. It's going to make it second down and nine. All inside the 20. Zachary Rutherford in with the play, number 13. I don't know. We got some buzzing in our headset. I'm not quite sure what that is. Busmonte, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Rutherford flexes way out to the right side. A little motion here by Queen to the near side and a pitch to uh, Isaac, and he's going to power forward. He's going to be down about the 15. Well, 
let's see. Oh, I think that's going to be about the 11. Pickup of about nine yards on that play for Isaac Morales. Nice little quick pitch to the left. Rutherford to the far right. Queen in the slot to the near side. The diggers headed north. Put Queen in motion. And hand, underneath handoff to Well, and not a lot there. He'll be close to the first down, though. He's just got to hit that 10 yard line, and I think it will be first and 10, and it is. First and goal for the Beat Diggers at the 10. The opening kickoff was brought to you by Buildings by Design. When it comes to experience, Buildings by Design is the best in the business. Quality, commitment, and experience makes Buildings by Design the only choice when it comes to your next project. Okay, Rutherford far to the right. Queen will flex out to the near side. Just inside the 10-yard line. Hondo under center. Hands it to the deep back. And not much there, maybe a yard. And it was Wellen on the carry. And Wellen's going to come running off. I think he's picking up the play and is going to run back in with it. Now we'll have Edgar Escalante coming in for uh, Rutherford. Escalante will flex out to the right side. B Tigger from the near side hash mark. Put Queen to the near side, flex out. Backs in the T. And underneath hand off to Wellen, he drives forward, but he's only going to make it maybe to the seven. See where the officials set it down. He might be about seven and a seven. Excuse me. Yeah, it's inside there, the seven and a half yard line, almost the eight yard line. So third and goal to go. So the beat is going to have to pick up a big one here. Rutherford to the right, Queen to the near side, Hondo under center, back to pass, got it. Oh, wide open. And there's going to be a, is that a flag? Yeah, there goes the official's flag blowing away. I think we're going to have pass interference. No, that's a football I see rolling. It isn't, wasn't yellow. It was the ball. Sorry. <laughs> so it's going to be fourth down and eight to go. Five minutes and 35 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Brush, the Brush Beat Diggers are on a 10 play drive right now. Inside the nine-yard line. Beat Diggers are going to go for it here. Fourth and goal. Hunter Dunn in with the play. He's to the near side. Queen way out to the right side. Back to pass. And got a catch there by Isaac Morales. And he's going to run it in. A little crossing pattern out of the backfield. And it's six to nothing here for the Beat Diggers. How about that one? 6-0 pass to Isaac from uh, Hondo. Alejandro Maltos Garcia. Pretty much just took the running back and ran him on a little flare pattern out of the backfield. He was wide open, hit him right in the soft spot. Isaac caught the football, turned up field, scored a touchdown. Brush is now up 6-0. Going for the extra point. Looks good from here, and it is. Beat diggers will go up 7 nothing. How about that? Uh, and we've got uh, 5.30 left here in the first period. Sterling hasn't touched the ball. Beat Diggers go up 7 and nothing. We'll be back in 30 seconds on 10.10, KSIR, KSIR.com. Okay, welcome back. Eric Duran setting up to kick it away to the Tigers. It's going to be a short kick coming up to one of the up men. And he's going to cut to the near side, breaks into the open, one man to beat, and going to be hit out of bounds. I guess there's two men to beat. Nice job there. Uh, that that was uh, Cesar Hinojos on the tackle. But the Sterling Tigers are going to be in the beat digger territory. That short kick off the up man grabbed it. Took it down to the 37-yard line. Thirty-seven, and they got first and ten. Okay, Tigers come out with that 
little motion there. Slot man and a run to the left side, the far side. Great blocking out there. A nice tackle on one of the beat their tacklers, but down inside the 20 goes the Tigers. Okay, I'm trying to pick up the numbers on the runner. I yeah, it's real think difficult. that was 14. That might have been Shala. Okay, first first and ten. And right up the middle. Here the coaches next door saying movement, but uh, officials haven't said so. You know, look at the Sterling steps. Tiger down on the yep. ground out there. He is down just uh, okay. about right, right about the 19 yard line. 5.06 to go. Ron Elbow along with Rob Hastings from Beat Digger Stadium. The Brush Beat Diggers took the opening shot, marched down the field, 11 plays, culminating in a touchdown, an extra point, and a score of 7-0. Brush is leading right now. Uh, we have a short timeout here because there is an injured player on the field. Well, the first Brush score is brought to you by Western Engineering Consultants. Engineering cult consultant services for all your projects. They have a strong commitment to their clients. It sets them apart. Get your project started the right way with Western Engineering Consultants. Give Chad Cox a call there. And Rob, that opening drive covered 80 yards. 80 yards and almost consumed the entire uh, first quarter. Almost seven About Seven minutes, and a half minutes. It? Yeah. Okay. Second and seven for the Tigers. Ball with the 19, and a run to the near side, nothing doing. Wellens in on a tackle, and along with uh, Michael Nichols. They get about a yard, a yard and a half. Short gain on the play, brings up third down and four for the Tiger. Okay, the ball set at about the 17. And... I think it might be a penalty against Brush jumping off sides. Well, yeah, I was trying to see. I thought I seen some movement on the uh, Sterling side, and nobody's running around. I let's see. They're going to call it offside. Oh, there's a flag way across the field. Yeah, I believe at that time it was Josiah Fuentes who jumped offside for Brush, the def one of the interior uh, defensive linemen. So that's going to give Sterling a first down. Inside the 10 yard line, goal to go. Uh, knows the ball is just, just short of the 10. Just a little bit. Hey, Sterling has a little shotgun look. Hands to the deep back. He's running to the right side and he's going to head to the end zone. I think he's in there, and he is. That'll be a Touchdown, little over a 10 yard TD on the run by the Tigers. So that didn't take long. Yes, we got officially called an 11 yard run. And listen, next door, they think it's uh, 44 is Liam Sergenic. Sergenic on that one. Kick is up and good. 4.08 on the clock. Didn't take the Tigers very long here in the first period. So that makes it 7-7 uh, tie here. How about Cargill Meat Solutions? Cargill works with the community to make sure there are jobs for the members of the communities they're in. That's Cargill Meat Solutions and b, &B Appliance. B&B &B Appliance can help you with all your appliance needs. Stop and see what they can do for you. Check them out at Inside Street in Fort Morgan for all those great Whirlpool products. Well, the Tigers getting set to kick it away. We'll send uh, Jace Krieger back to the far side. It's going to line up about the 10-yard line. Queen to the near side. Pete Diggers in their cardinal helmets, cardinal singlets, bright yellow uh, pants and numbers. Sterling in black pants, 
white jerseys and black helmets and a little pooch kick coming right up here to the near side right into the bench no, I'm not sure I think that's Hunter Dunn he grabbed it and he's going to have good field position for the beat diggers out across the 40 about the 42 43 yard line first and ten beat diggers Peter offense looking good. The defense had a little trouble there. Yep. You know, it's just that's one of those things they got to continue to work on to be able to stop teams and not give up those big plays. Hunter Dunn to the near side. Queen to the far side. Backs a little offset. Underneath handoff to Wellen right up the middle. He gets tackled by the ball. And it's pulled out by uh, Sterling, but I think they're going to blow it dead. That was uh, Mitty, I think, on the tackle. Right about the 44-yard line. Yeah, it was. And he tackled the ball. He ripped it out, but that was about three yards after the initial hit, so they'd blown her dead. Okay, Peter's set to go again. Second down and nine. Underneath handoff to uh, Isaac Morales. He's going to be up for about a yard and a half or two. It's going to be across the 45. We're going to mark it down at 46. Good carry there. But third down and seven for the diggers. Right now, I think it'd be a good time to, to pull a pull a bootleg to the far side of the field. The way that Sterling is lined up right now, and how we're lined up to bootleg right would be a great call at this time. Okay, got Queen in the slot, and straight back pass is Hondo, and he's got it. He's got Queen for the first down, and that'll be into Tiger territory. They're going to mark that thing right at the 45-yard line. He's hit up and driven back about three yards, but they're going to mark it right there where he caught it. In that formation, they had Queen on the far side in the slot. What they knew is they just ran him up about five to seven yards, and a little quick out, got the ball to him. Quarterback and protection was set up that way, so he rolled to the right, first down. Nice pass by Alejandro Maltos Garcia, quarterback. They'll move over to the far side. Hash marks. On the under center, hands it right up the middle. I think that was Morales on the carry for about three. See where they unpile from. Yeah, give him four on that one. Second down and six. Ball at the 42 yard line. Hunter Dunn in with the play. He'll move out here to the near side. Queens. Hiding over there by the Sterling bench on the far side, underneath handoff, nothing doing there. By that time, the Sterling Tigers guessed right. They knew he was going to run a dive, and so they had a blitz coming, and they had too many guys for our guys to block and just stuffed it up, and he was he was tackled right away for no loss, for, for no gain. Trying to look, try to see. There's a four on the end of that big guy. That's probably... Uh, Drew Book is list. He's 58. Yeah, it probably, 58. It probably was Liam Skrjanic. <laughs> that is he's a linebacker third and, also. Third and seven for <laughs> the Diggers. Escalante to the near side. And back to pass is Alejandro. Good pass protection. He throws it up high. And oh, in and out of the hands of the Digger receiver. Let's see, is that Jade Queen again? Jade Queen. Had it there, but had very good coverage on him by uh, Jackson Kyle, I think. Is Boy, what that a five? No, Tucker Myers. Yeah, that's Tucker Myers. Number five, he's just a sophomore. Myers, 6'3", 175, using that height. Fourth and seven for the Diggers. And it looks like they're going to punt it away. Pretty nice punt back to the 10-yard line and coming to the near side and break it into the clear. 
And there's a nice stiff arm still coming. He's going to run out of bounds. And uh, if you got really good eyes, you can read that. 24, I believe. Uh, that's Isaac Harris on the uh, carry from the 10, clear out to the uh, 32 yard line. Tigers will start off five yards further away than they were the, on their last drive. And we'll take over at just 37 seconds on the clock. First period. It's tied 7-7. Hand off to the deep back, and there's nothing doing there. Pete Digger's all over it. It looked like uh, Michael Nichols kind of broke it up, and he had help from a lot of his friends. Metlin in there. Okay, there's a loss of two. So they move the ball right back on the 30. They go out of the shotgun, holler a little bit, and look over to coaches, Coach Busamonte. Got a receiver in the slot. Now they have flex one. Nope, oh, I think we're going to get a timeout here by the Sterling. The nope, it's the end of the quarter. Excuse me, end of the quarter. How about that? 7-7 seven, seven, tie between the brush beat diggers. And the Sterling Tigers here on 1010 KSIR. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, welcome back. 7-7 seven, seven tie. Second and 12 for the Tigers. Rob Hastings along with uh, Ron Albo. And uh, we've got the start of the uh, second quarter. Tied up 7-7. Seven, seven. I think I've seen Kyle Wellen's number out there cornerback on the far side. Hey, he's a defensive back right right now. Okay. Oh, fake and a quarterback keeper off the left side, breaking into the clear. First down, still going, finally tackled over on the far side. That's Shala. And that was uh, Maltos Garcia on the tackle. But that's first and ten for the Tigers. Second drive for the Tigers. Only didn't take them very long to score last time. We got three whites to the near side and a pass to the near side, a, kind of a screen. And uh, it's a live ball. No. Up hit the ground. Yeah, it did. To beat Diggers. Uh, receiver, I think that's number six, Jackson Keel. It's a little high and bounced. A little high. The crowd thought maybe the beat diggers had a shot at her. There might have been a little behind the line of scrimmage, but it's just incomplete. Second and ten. Ball sitting right on the 50-yard line on the far hash marks. Sterling headed to our left, the north. We've got a little motion, a run to the near. No, keeper by the quarterback, and he's going to be hit down. Nice tackle in there. I think that's Queen. Is that No, that's uh, Isaac Morales, 30 on the tackle. Gain of about maybe two? Uh, short two. Let's call it one. Make it third and nine. Uh, Sterling right back into the formation. Two wides to the near side, one clear to the far side. And now Busmonte signals in a play. Quarterback in the shotgun. And back to pass, straight to pass, and there's a receiver out there. But over his head, nice coverage there by uh, Ivan Cardenas. That'll bring up fourth down and eight for Sterling. Should be I'm not quite sure if they're going to. I think they're going to go for it. Fourth down, eight yards to go. Go. Yeah, fourth. Just, just fourth right down from the yeah, right at the 48-yard line. They've got to get to the 40 of the B diggers. And we've got three whites to the near side. There's. Center sitting right on the hash marks to the right side. Got one running back there with the quarterback. And back to pass that screen again, and it's dropped again. So Beater is going to take over in great field position at their own 48-yard uh, line. So 
So, Beat Diggers stop the Tigers. The Beat Diggers will be Now they've moved it back about a half a yard there. <laughs> okay. So Beat Diggers set for their uh, third drive here. Still tied up 7-7. Seven, seven. And I think that's uh, Zach Rutherford flexed out to the far side. Beat Diggers on that far sideline, or far hash mark. And there's a throwback pass, and out in the open, and there's a catch. Oh, man, what a nice catch. Luke Seawald coming out of that tight end. Pitched back to, to Queen by Alejandro. And Queen threw it up high and dropped it right in there. Beat Diggers are down inside the 20, down to about the 16-yard line, isn't it, Ron? They are right at the, yeah, just shy. Of, actually, they're at the 14-yard uh, line. No, let's see. Yeah, I think it's 16. 16. Boy, I missed some hash marks. <laughs> it's good for old guys' eyes. Okay, Rutherford to the near side. Beat Diggers near side hash marks. Hand off, and Morales is going to be up for about th two yards. Okay. They're going to say they moved the ball up. Got about two yard gain. It's sitting right. On the 15-yard line, 15-yard line, only a one-yard game. Queen will flex out far to the left side. Rutherford to the near side. Put Queen in motion towards the, and a pitch to the far side to Isaac Morales. He's got a blocker out there. He's got a touchdown. Gets hit there right at the uh, goal line, but the beat there is going to take the lead, 13 to seven. Morales on the 15-yard uh, carry. Well, Brush not wasting any time. Once again, getting downfield, mixing up the plays with the, the pass and the run and going to what's been successful for him, which is that off-tackle play. Morales taking advantage uh, or taking advantage of Morales' quick speed. He's a quick hitter. He gets the ball, and he hits the hole fast. And uh, once he's off to the race, it's awful hard to catch him. And that'll be 14-7 to for the Beat Diggers. So with that, it's uh, 9.28 left here in the uh, second quarter. We'll be back in a moment on 10.10 KSIR, KSIR.com. Welcome back. 9.28 to go here in the first half, 14-7 to for the Beat Diggers. And we've got uh, Eric Duran set to kick it away. A little short pooch catch. Kick is going to drop, and the receiver, oh, the Beat Diggers got it, but uh, who are they going to say has it? Uh, I think maybe the Sterling guy got up there and got it. Hunter Dunn was out of bounds and grabbed the ball, but uh, I, I don't know. How would you call that one wrong? <laughs> How would it have been Sterling ball because he was out of bounds? Yep. So Sterling Tigers will take over at their 26-yard line for their third drive. Yeah. They set up the near side hash marks, headed north. Those white uniforms got a little motion going out of the backfield, flexing out to the right side, throwing a pass in and out of the hands, I think. Uh, Isaac Harris, I think, on the carry, or on the catch, hit him right in the hands. It might have been Grant Brammer, number 20. Okay, Sterling right back up the ball, second and 10 from the 20, 25. And handoff straight up the middle, and there will be a five-yard carry. That's Harris on the carry, number 24. He's a senior, 5'11", 145. 
third and six to go for Sterling. Got wide receiver in the near side, one on the far side, handoff right up the middle, not much there. Good job there. There's Matlin under there, along with uh, Michael Nichols and uh, Cy Fuentes. Fuentes, too. <laughs> they had that one. Looks like the Tigers are going to boot it away. I think that's number four out there for the Tigers. They're going to punt it away. Back to receive the kick as Isaac Morell is standing right at about his 30 yard line. And kind of a slow kick in the way. And it's going to be short, bounce just over the 50 and hit down by one of the Tigers. I apologize for it is just about impossible to see that glare off of some of these uniforms for the Tigers numbers. Whoever thought that one up uh, didn't have to broadcast a game. Brush will take over at their, at their own 45 with 8 minutes and 10 seconds to go in the second quarter. Brush leading by a score of 14-7 over the Sterling Tigers. Beat Diggers fourth possession, so they'll have first and 10 at 45. Flex Rutherford to the far left. Queen to the near side, right in the center of the field. Alejandro under center. And he hands it right up the middle, nothing doing. A great big guy in the, in the middle there. <laughs> Hunter Paxton, 6'2", 180. I can't believe that's him on the tackle. He's, he's nowhere near 180. Yeah, Sterling, Maybe 280. Sterling did a great job there just holding their ground, and, and Willen had nowhere to run. The offensive line got no push at all, and so it's just a stalemate. And when that stalemate happened, he, he hit a brick wall right there and a no-gainer. So it brings up second down and says nine, but it probably is closer to second down and ten with 7.36 to go in the, in the second quarter. He gained about a, two football lengths there. Hunter Dunnell flex out to the far side. Queen in the slot to the far side. And back to pass is Alejandro, and he's going to throw it away right into the beat digger bench. And there comes a flag for intentional grounding. Yep. There was no. I don't think you have a a box like you do in the pros. Or <laughs> yeah, and there'll be a penalty for that. There was nobody in that pass route. They had three receivers. They set out in the pass route, but unfortunately, they were all to the far side of the field. And Honda Alejandro Maltos rolled to the near side of the field, and there was nobody to throw the ball to. Yeah, that's going to be a big penalty. That's going to drop him clear back inside the 35. It's going to drop him deep, right to about the 29-yard line. Yeah, that's, yeah they're, after they step it off, it's that's a huge penalty. They've got uh, third down and 29 to go. You don't have too many plays the in the high school level for that. Got to get clear up to the... Uh, inside the 45 yard line of the Tigers for a first down. Alejandro taking his time, nice back to pass, a little draw play. Well and coming up the middle, but he's gonna be hit down after about a three or four yard carry. It'll be fourth down and a bunch to go. About 22 yards to go. Peter sending their punt team. Nick Wellen's going to punt it away. I can see some shiny out there on that uh, jersey, but I can't see the number for the Tigers. High snap. Wellen has it, gets it away, but it's not going very far. And it's going to hit over into the Sterling bench. That might be a about a 15 yard punt. Oh, it didn't even make it to the 45. They're going to mark it down at the 43 yard line of the beat diggers. Sterling's going to take over with great field position. The Tigers head north. We'll go with three in the backfield, hand off to the near side. Got good blocking out here. Wellen trying to track him down. Nice job of tackling out here. And 
Good job by uh, Zach Rutherford on the tackle. Great job of Zach Rutherford, the cornerback on this near defensive back on this far the near side here, coming up when he recognized that run to make a tackle, not not that to get into a big gainer. There's a great blocking out there, but he fought through it and kept it down to a two yard gain. Starting to have two wides to the right side, the wide side of the field. Start Tigers here at the near side. One wide receiver right in front of the brush bench. One back, and there's a little screen to the far side. Good blocking out there, and running backwards. <laughs> okay, that's 32. Let's see. You know, the great job right there on the part of Nick Wellen to be able to get out there on that, recognize that bubble screen that's out there, and he shot out there and held his ground, broke down, and made a great tackle, and once again stopped it from picking up. Big yards on a play like that. Third down, uh, about six there for the Tigers. Ball just inside the 40. And there's a fake and a quarterback keeper right up the middle. Good. Running off to the right side. One man to beat and breaking for the touchdown. Uh, but Oh, man, how about that? That's coming a 39-yard touchdown run for the Sterling Tigers. Good play fake there. So that makes it 13 to 14 at this point. Let's see, that's 5-10 left here in the first half. It almost looked to me, and I wasn't quite sure, but it looked like maybe Brush might have had a stunt on or a blitz, and all of a sudden, once he broke past that containment right there, he was just off to the races, and it was our defensive back on the far side of the field that was left to make the tackle. Brock Stella. Okay, the kick is good, so we're tied up 14-14. How about that? Let's take a 30-second time, time out here on 1010 KSIR, KSIR.com. Okay, welcome back. We're tied up at 14. Beat Diggers to receive the kick here. Chase Krieger back there along with the Queen. And we're underway. And, oh, there's a little pooch kick and the... Tigers are after it, but uh, one of the up men for the beat there's jumps on the ball. I think that's Rutherford. No, that's Hunter Dunn. Got the ball on the far side. It may, he may have pushed it out of bounds. I couldn't tell if he caught it or just went out of bounds, but he did a great job of getting up there and protecting the ball. So the beat diggers will have good field position here at the 30, it's called 37 yard line. On of their fifth position. And that comes with 5.10 on the clock. Okay, there. But the far side hash marks. Queen in the slot, far side. And there's little, oh, quarterback keeper. Man, this Alejandro hit hard. There. No, that was Queen. Yeah, they that, that was a little. Uh, that was a flanker, flanker reverse. Inside handoff to our flanker on the far side, which was Key Queen. I could see uh, the helmet pop back as there's helmet to helmet contact there on that run. So we'll call it second 12, short 12 for the beat diggers. Well, Nose the ball right on the uh, 35 yard line. Here comes a blitz, and there's a nice little pass to the near side. Good coverage by the Tigers. Queen. Steps away from one tackle, but can't get away from the other one. But a gain of about five. It would be short of the 40. Isaac Morales on that reception Was oh, that there. Morales? Yeah, Morales okay. coming out of the backfield. I've seen the zero, but not the... So we'll give that one to Isaac. Okay, third and seven for the Diggers. Well, just short of the 45-yard line. Zach Rutherford in with the play. He'll move off to the near side. He takes on the near side hash marks. Queen in the slot for the near side. Hunter done the tight end to the far side. Alondra on the center. And we get a delay of game on the beat diggers. That hurts. That'll make it third and 12.
So that'll march him all the way back to the 34-yard line, bringing up third down at about 12, Rob. Yes. 14-14 in the second quarter, 3.42 to go. <coughs> Ron Elbow along with Rob Hastings on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. 3.12 left to go here in the half. Finances make us all uncertain, but First okay. National Bank and Flag. Back at Ron Elbow, Rob Hastings here, and... Uh, Got a timeout by the uh, Beat Diggers, 3.42 on the clock. We're tied up 14-14 here in the uh, second quarter. So we're just short of the halftime here, about 3.42. But it's third and a long 12 for the Beat Diggers. Well, there's many. There's a couple times their brush has shot themselves in the foot as far as on, you know, they've got to delay a delay game penalty, um, you know, and so it's marched them back there. They've got to get back in the rhythm again here like they were early in the game on on running the ball consistently. Sterling's done a great job adjusting their defense and, and stopping us a lot of times on our inside trap game. Okay, Rutherford to the far side, still going from the near side hash mark. Alejandro under center, and getting a big rush, a little screen, and oh boy, uh, one of the Tigers is right there in front of Morales. I don't know if he touched that ball or not, but it's just gonna go an incomplete. And you know, Rob, if you're thinking about it, if you're Sterling, You've got a freshman quarterback. You're going to bring the heat to see how he can react to it. Sometimes you're going to guess good, and other times, you know, you we might guess good and pick up a big play. But that time, Sterling had the heat on him. Too much pressure. There's nowhere for him to go with the ball. Okay. Nick Wellen set to kick it away. Isaac Harris deep. Back about the 33-yard line. Big rush. Wellen gets it away. He gets hit. And the kick's going to go out of bounds here in front of the beat digger bench. Well, let's see where are they going to mark it. <laughs> the other side, of the ref on the line judge here is looking for help from the uh, uh, the other official. He didn't get it. He's not quite sure where to set the ball down. So one of the guys from the other side is going to set it down here at the 35-yard line. That was a good guess, I think. I think they're a little bit more generous on the side of brush because that ball looked like it kind of went out between the 35 and the 40-yard line. Okay. <clears throat> we'll, we'll call it 35. Sterling will head north here on their fifth position. Two wides to the middle of the field and straight back to pass. And there's a – out there to – Oh, gosh, 24. That's uh, Isaac Harris, I think, on the catch, and he's going to have about nine yards. That'll bring up second down and about one. We'll set it down there at the 44-yard uh, line. Sterling right back up the line of scrimmage. One wide to the far side. Harrison motion across, and underneath that, oh, boy, nothing doing there. Uh, let's see. Uh, that was a great job there by Chase Barnett. Wow. He stopped him in his tracks for about a two, three-yard loss. Let's put it back at the 42. Third and three. Okay. Now we got a little motion to the near side. Going to hand it this this way, nothing there. Oh, nothing there. Good cut back, but it's going to be fourth down and about four yards for the Tigers. A lot of running around there, but uh, there wasn't uh, sideways doesn't count. Got the defensive end on this side staying very disciplined and not getting sucked in and staying home and caught and, and forcing that running back to go back inside where he had help from linebackers. Brock Shell uh, talks a little bit. Now he comes up. Looks to the coach and hollers out of play. Two whites to the far side. We put the slot guy in motion to the near side. Got a little motion here from the beat diggers, but he didn't go across the line of screen. They're uh, just trying to get the beat diggers to go off sides. And now Tigers are going to call timeout with 148 on the clock here in the uh, second quarter. How about that. Let's take a short timeout. We're still tied up, 14-14 here on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. You're on. Okay, the Tigers come out. The ball's at their 43-yard uh, line, fourth and three. 
two wides to the far side, one to the near side. And there's a fumble, and the beat diggers are going to hit him down. Stala uh, fumbled that snap, got in a little hurry, and didn't watch the ball come into him. The beat diggers are going to have great position here with 144 on the clock here in the first half. It's called 37 yard line of Sterling. That's better than the 37 yard line that they started their last year. Yes. Drive at it's on Sterling's, and but they've only got 144 to play. Okay, two wides for the diggers near side. We'll put Queen in motion from the outside. Pitch it to Morales. Breaks one tackle, but he's going to still go down for a loss. It'll be a second and eleven. Yeah, that time, that was a, a, a quick pitch. And if you understand beat digger football, it's a 59, a quick toss to the far side. The tight end's responsibility is to hook the defensive end, and you've got a tackle pulling out, leading the way. And we just didn't get out there quick enough to uh, secure that perimeter. Sterling did a good job of covering it. A loss of about two yards. I think it was uh, Colton Shaw out there on the defensive side. Okay, beat digger set to go. Alejandro back to pass. He throws it up high. Queen's out there. Has it. And he's inside the 10-yard line. That was a jump ball. Double coverage. And uh, beating, uh, let's see, that was number six. Jackson Keel was right there on him. He's a freshman uh, defensive back. But Queen jumped higher and has it. First and goal for the beat diggers at the 7-yard line. 32-yard pass play for a first down. Clock winding inside of 45 seconds. Alejandro under center has it to Morales. He breaks to the end zone. He's almost got the th third touchdown. Going to be just short. Let's set it at the half yard line. And the beat diggers will have to take their time out. I think that's their uh, last one. But that'll stop the clock with 34 and a half seconds left. Let's hold it here. How about that? As the beat diggers doing well. Transwest. Transwest believes that customers are number one. Check out their selection online or just stop by one of their dealerships in Fort Morgan or Sterling today. And this is 1010 KSIR, Brush Fort Morgan, and sometimes Sterling. Three, about three, well, 34.6. Uh, seconds left in the first half, 14-14 tie, and the beat diggers are about six inches away from a touchdown, Ron. And what a way to end the first half going into halftime with the score here on the board. It's got to provide a lot of momentum for them as they come back out in the second half. Okay, beat diggers are lining up. Tigers are running out. Beat diggers will have to be going from the center of the field, two wides to each side. Alejandro under center, hands it right up the middle to Wellen, and touchdown, beat Digger Shirley, yes, they finally signal it. Nice job by the beat Diggers. And when you get that close, Rob, you just go to what what always works for you, and that's a straight ahead dive, a nice inside trap, give it to your money man, which is Nick Wellen at that time, and it's a touchdown. And that comes at 31 seconds of the first half, first half or second quarter. Okay, 20 to 7 diggers, and we're getting set for the kick. And it is good. 21 to 14 for the beat diggers. But we got 31.2 seconds left of excitement here before we take a break at halftime as the beat diggers will kick it away. So, nice 35 yard drive by the 37 yard drive by the beat diggers. After the fumble on fourth down by the Tigers, and the beat diggers took advantage of it. Beat diggers sending their kickoff crew out there. Eric Grand set to kick it away. Caden Moriarita is out there. On the defensive team, one of several, and we'd get a high pooch kick coming here to the near side. It's going to bounce, and and uh, 
The ball didn't go out of bounds. The receiver did and caught it. He'd been better off the left alone, maybe. It's going to set down there at the uh, 21 yard line. 30.8 seconds on the clock for the Tigers. And they'll start at their own 21. See if they'll try to air it out here. <clears throat> Stall will send uh, three to the right side, the far side of the field, one to the near side. And he throws it on that little screen to the far side. And Morales is out there on defense. He, several other beat diggers, and they knock him out of bounds with 24, almost 25 seconds on the clock. And Rob Sterling's pretty good at, at covering a lot of ground with their passing game. They're very, you know, when, they, when they're on, they're pretty efficient. So Rush has just got to play some good pass defense, make sure they stay disciplined, don't let guys get behind him, and watch those crossing routes as they've got three receivers on the near side of the field. Yeah, they put the three to the, this side this time. Install a barks out signals, trying to get somebody to jump off sides. Now he looks at Coach Boost Monkey and he'll change the play. Move his running back to the near side. Straight back and way out there. And if he catches this, it's touchdown and tie it up with the beat diggers with an extra point. Oh my goodness, guys. That was a seventy a six a sixty nine yard touchdown pass for it. Pass for a touchdown. I think, I think 71. It was at the 29, wasn't it? 20, yeah, that, it's, uh, it's, that was at the 31 yard line. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. That was ugly, guys. <laughs> he was so wide open. <laughs> uh, he just busted down the field and the nobody was deep. Beat Diggers kind of showed that last week against Fort Lupton. And here comes the kick. And we're tied up 21-21. Let's see what the beat diggers can do with 16 seconds left. Oh, boy. What they need to do is just go ahead and get the first snap, secure the ball, and get into halftime here and, re and regroup. But, uh, Fif yeah, 15.7 seconds to go in the second quarter. Brush and Sterling both tied up at a score of 21 to 21. Ron L. belongs Rob Hastings on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. We are 15.7 seconds away from halftime. You know, what did you say that was? How many? 70 yards or 69? 69, 69 yard. yard. Pass and catch for a touchdown. Okay. Tied up 21 21. Tigers will kick it away. Queen to the far side. And we're underway. A nice deep kick goes to Morales. He's got a few blockers here to the near side. And he breaks out to the 39-yard uh, line. We've still got 11 seconds left here in the first half. See if we can get some digger magic going here, Ron. <laughs> Set the ball at the 39-yard line of the beat diggers. Seven point three seconds on the clock. Tigers have uh, four defensive backs, fifteen yards off the line of scrimmage. Beat diggers are just going to kneel down, and it'll be half times for us. Well, twenty-one twenty-one. How about that? As we wind down, and there goes the siren. So we're tied up twenty-one twenty-one with Sterling Tigers. Let's take a short time out. We'll be back with more on 1010-KSIR, KSIR.com. Okay, welcome back here at Beat Digger Football Field in the Frank Mercer uh, Press Box. It's 21-21 tie, Beat Diggers and Sterling Tigers, Ron Obo, Rob Hastings. We're having a lot of fun here because we're behind the glass. It's nice and warm. Uh, the crowd's a little thin, and they're all shivering. <laughs> Boy, yeah, you know, it's one of the first... Uh, First oh. game of the year where the weather's a little bit colder, and so they, you know, we started up with wind this afternoon. It's just kind of continued, and uh, obviously that sometimes affects the crowd here. But you know, we're 
we're not missing we're not you're missing a heck of a game if you're not here because this is a pretty exciting game there's lots of scoring going on i know if you're a, a brush fan or brush coaching staff and the football team they probably didn't want this to be a shootout they wanted to be able to come in here and control the clock i know talking to coach went earlier today you know like he always preaches the best defense is his offense on the field controlling the clock you know and they started that opening drive 80 yards you know, eight, almost eight minutes worth of time on the clock, culminating in a touchdown and a 7-0 score right off the bat. So that was what we thought things to come as they just go ahead and control the clock, control the clock. But, you know, Sterling got the ball, and they were quick hitters right down the field. Next thing you know, they scored, and it's a 7-7 game. And from here on out, we haven't looked back because it's been nonstop scoring on both sides of the ball. Sterling just scoring at the end of the first half to bring that score to 21-21. So who knows what the second half's going to be, but uh, I look for it to be – you know, I, as we talked earlier, might be a situation where, you know, the last person that has the ball is the one that's going to win the game. Well, that's, well it'll be interesting coming up here. And, well, there was a lot, most of the crowd, I think, was out on the field. <laughs> <laughs> the beat diggers were there, break out, run out onto the field and run through the banner and uh, get a little warm-ups in. And uh, Sterling Tigers, you look at their roster, and they got a lot of big kids, but they're young I graduated a yep. really good bunch last year, but you know, Coach Busamante, Busamante he's he's very has a very you know disciplined team here, and they're not afraid to gamble either. I mean, they're they're not afraid to throw the ball downfield. They have a lot of uh, confusion a lot of times with their receivers. You know, they throw a lot of screens, real quick screens. They come out in a three receiver, two receiver split set, so they've got an empty backfield. And that's obviously, you know, as you're looking at it, it's a definitely a passing formation. So you've got to be able to defend against that pass. And so knowing the way that team is coming into this game, Brush knew it would put a lot of pressure on their defense, in particular their pass defense. Well, I want to thank uh, Ingmar Phillips Insurance. Things happen in life. Make sure you're prepared with the right insurance coverage. It's Ingmar Phillips Insurance and Brush and Fort Morgan and Morgan Community College. They're there to make your dreams become a reality for both traditional and non-traditional students. Check them out at morgancc.edu. That's Morgan Community College. Well, Ron, we got just a few moments. We'll uh, let's head back for some of our great sponsors. We'll be back in uh, about two minutes here on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. 2121 at halftime. Okay, welcome back to Brush. 21-21 here at halftime, and the Tigers will receive the ball as we're just, uh, halftime is winding down. We're about ready to kick off the second half, and crowds, uh, that's got to be chilly out there, Ron. <laughs> yep, we are we're fortunate that we're inside this booth here. There's not, We don't have to worry about the wind, but, you know, like I say it once again, it's like it's football season. you got to expect it to be cold once in a while, so. That's just uh, that's what you need. To, what you need to happen. That's what happens. Well, the kids working hard out on the field. They, they I don't think it bothers them much. Now, when you're when you're playing and you're keeping warm, it's not really that much that much problem for you. You're just your your mind's off it. You're just worried about the game, and that's a good thing. So, Rush is about ready to kick off from right to left on your dial. Sterling to receive the second half kickoff. Okay. Brush, yeah, Brush well, is up. Isaac Harris back there, I believe, was one of the receivers. Eric Duran set to go, and we're underway in the second half. It's a low line drive kick, and it's going to go out of bounds, about to 30. So we'll get the flag, and they'll mark it off out. Should be out to the 35. Be first and 10. Great field position for the Tigers here to start the second half. Great field position, and you know, not what you want to give up to Sterling in this opening drive with that high powered offense of theirs, as they showed us at the end of the first half there. Um, and so, uh, giving them a short field just makes it a little bit easier for them to get down the field and get in the end zone. Okay, Tigers come out, and they'll be working from the near side hash marks. Four or five wide receivers, one in the slot, now one in motion, working out to the far side. And a pass is going to be in and out. Nope, caught. Now let's know they're going to wave it off. In yeah, and out of the hands of the receiver. Around. So that bounced away Brock Shala on the throw. And that time Sterling just rolled to the far side of the field where the protection was and looked for that receiver. He ran down about a 10-yard 
and then a quick out pattern, and that's where he was trying to get the ball to. Now we got near side hash marks for the Tigers. Two wide receivers clear over by the Tiger bench as Sterling heads south. And Brock Stala there in the backfield all by himself. Two wide receivers on the near side, a little motion. And Stala right up the middle and hit down hard as Stala. He might have gained three yards, maybe four. Defense doing a great four. job of, of stopping him there and limiting that gain to just three yards and not a big gainer. Third down and third and six for the Tigers. Well, just. Just short of the 40. Oh, it's 39. Stala looks over to Coach Busmontes in the backfield all by himself again. And he's looking over to the far side. A little step back, not quite a screen. A good breakaway run going for uh, the Tigers. Finally hit down out of bounds on the far side. That was Jackson Keel, I think, on the re reception. For a 23-yard pickup and a first down for Sterling. Now they're into positive territory with 11 minutes and 9 seconds to go. Yeah, set the ball down at the 30, about the 37-yard line. Two wides clear over by the Sterling bench. One to the near side here. And straight up the, no, a pass right up the middle. It's going to be a touchdown. Nobody's going to catch the Sterling wide receiver. Wow. That's 19 on the Colton Sala. And that was a 38-yard. Yeah, Brock Sala, that was a 38-yard touchdown. What they did is they took that running back in the backfield. They faked the dive to him. He went through the middle of the field and then just dumped it right to him, and it was a first down. Caught everybody off guard as the linebacker sucked up to make the play. And Tigers set up for their fourth uh, extra point try. Ball's down, up. Low, but it's going to be good. It's going to be 28-21 for the Tigers. How about that? As uh, we'll, That didn't take very long. We're, Ron, 10.47 on the clock. We'll be back in 30 seconds on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Okay, welcome back. And not even a three-minute drive here for the Tigers, and they're up by 7, 28-21. And set to kick it away. A little pooch kid coming to the near side, picked up here by Queen. He cuts off the right side, but he's going to be hit down at about the 24-yard line. So 10.42 on the clock. Be diggers will head north. And like we said at halftime, Rob, Brush has got to be able to answer this call here. They've got to be able to control the clock here and go down and score. Got the backs in the eye this time. Alejandro under center in the misstep. I'm not sure what Isaac was doing. He wasn't even set, and he kind of jumped, and they're going to throw a flag on him. Illegal procedure on the beat diggers. So that's going to set him back inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. It's not the way you want to go. Okay. Wide outs to each side for the beat diggers. Back is in the eye. Morales with it, the deep back, and he might get back to the 20, but it's only a gain of about a yard. Short of the 20. He's second and 14. Zach Rutherford in with the play. Number 13. He'll be the wide receiver to the right side, the far side. Queen will be in the slot to the far side. B. Diggers to the near side hash mark. Alejandro will hand it off to the near side, coming to the to the edge. It's uh, Morales. He's going to be up for about four yards, maybe get him out to the 25, make it third and 10. 
for the Bee Diggers. Rutherford coming over. Listen, the coach and uh, Edgar Escalante is going to bring in the play. Bee Diggers need to hurry. The referee's got his hand in the air. Escalante to the right. Back to pass. Little screen to the near side. Got blockers out there. Morales is going to be short of the uh, 30 yard line. So it's going to bring up fourth and about, uh, well, they might, fourth and about six. Pretty well look, good looking play, but Sterling closed on it real fast. And we've got Morales slow to get up. He's right here at the south end of the beat digger bench. So I have to hold up for a moment while we get him out of the way. And the beat diggers are going to call timeout. Boy, you don't want to do that either this early in the half. So with that, we'll take a short timeout. 9-12 to go here in the third quarter, 28-21. Sterling Tigers on top of the brush beat diggers. We'll be back in a moment. Nick Wellen with the punt is uh, it's only going to go to the 40 of the uh, Tigers, and we get a flag here late. Uh -oh. Let's see. One of the beat diggers is clapping his hands. I don't know if that's going to go against the Tigers. Fifteen yard penalty against the Tigers. Not sure something happened behind the line of scrimmage here. Sure. So Sterling will take so, over the. Well, they should have had the ball at the 40 yard line. They'll march 15 yards off that, I believe. So it'll bring it back to the 25 yard line, is where their starting point should be. Yeah. Unless they've already. Clock still setting at 9.05 yeah. here in the third period. Yeah. So they'll take over at. At the 25, your own, their own 25-yard line, first and 10 with 9.05 to go in the third quarter, starting leading by a score of 28-21 over Brush. Isaac Morales went out there on defense, but uh, coach is going to send in Jace Krieger, and Morales comes to the bench. He's slow getting up after that uh, screen pass. Okay, different look for Sterling. They started the half with the four or five wide receivers. Now... A run to the far side, and Peter's going to stop that for no gain. Krieger, one of them on the tackle. There's about three beat diggers involved. Had one hit behind the line, slowed him down, and a couple buddies showed up. Tigers will spend two clear to the far side. Two wide receivers here to the near side. Slot receiver. To the right side here, and the quarterback in the backfield all by himself. Shotgun, low snap. He's looking deep and throws it a mile deep, and we've got receivers out there. And the uh, ball was just a little overthrown. Good job by Yvonne Cardenas. Yeah, that time. It was stride for stride. Yeah, Yvonne was down there with him. Great coverage, but Yvonne's kind of limping up like maybe he might have pulled a hamstring or something on that. I'm not quite sure, but he's hobbling a little bit holding his left leg, so we'll just see what happens if he, as he stays back in there again. But Sterling's not afraid to go deep on, on those uh, freshman corners. Yeah, he's given up about six inches, two in height. Well, Sterling will go with, they've got a running back this time, the left side of the quarterback. Sterling headed south in their white unit. White jerseys, black pants, little orange stripes on there, too. Okay. Oh, option. nice little option pitch, and good run here coming up, and a first down hit into the, the beat digger bench. Yes, that's uh, 34 on the carry. Shane J, a yep. six foot, 190 pound running back. Starting that time, lined up in a formation with the fullback to the left side. They looked out to see how our alignment, the defensive alignment was. The last minute, they shifted into the right, snapped the ball, quick option went. To the near side of the field, the weak side of the formation, and picked up a big first down. <clears throat> okay, set the ball down at the 37 and a half, 
and right up the middle for about an eight yard gain. It was Jay, I believe, on the carry. Jay on the carry. Brings it second down at about uh, three and a half, maybe close to four, probably three and a half yards. Not sure who sold Sterling his uniforms, but they didn't get their money's worth. You can't see the numbers. <laughs> Once in a while, you get the light just right. Have two wide receivers to the near side. Yeah, we've got three or four over there on the other side. Now Sterling's going to have to call a timeout because they don't have the, the right, uh, right combination. That Something time. not going good there, isn't it? Northeastern, when it comes to your future, Northeastern is miles ahead. Their college is close to home. That's Northeastern Junior College. And I got the wrestling lineup. Oscar Soto, one former beat digger down there wrestling for Good. the Tigers. They're going to have some uh, meets this month, so you have to check that out. Check them out there at the Northeastern Junior College. Ed. Yeah, oh. Northeastern Junior College. I don't have that off the tip of my tongue. And High Plains Bank. See what a century of customer service can do for you at High Plains Bank and Wiggins. They offer you a variety of banking needs, including agriculture and personal loans. That's High Plains Bank. Okay, now the Tigers and Beaters have both burned it. Time out here in the first half, 7.43 to go. Tigers up 28-21 over the Diggers. Now they go with the uh, shotgun look. Two running backs right at each side of the quarterback. Little motion from the slot. Wide receivers out the far side. And there's a pass across the middle and dropping it. He's a receiver, good coverage out there. Krieger out there along with uh, Yvonne Cardenas. Yvonne, um, yeah. What Sterling did that time is they brought him in motion to the near side of the field, isolated that receiver on the back side, and just ran a quick slant when he had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the back side. Okay, Tigers right back up the ball. Two running backs, handoff. Nope, quarterback keeper to the far side. He breaks into the clear. And he's across the 40, 50, down to the 30, keeps running, and he's hit, but it's going to be a touchdown for the Tigers. As uh, good running there by uh, Shala. A 55 yard touchdown. Bad tackling run. by the beat diggers. Bad tackling. They just uh, looked like several people had a shot at him, and he just high stepped it along the sideline and run it in. He said that was 54 yards at 729 at the third quarter. Brock Shala on the touchdown for Sterling. Just on that fake run and the quarterback keeper. Kick is up and looks good. Okay, with that uh, we'll be back in a moment. 35 for the Tigers, 21 for the Beat Diggers. Beat Diggers will uh, be on offense when we come back on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Okay, Tigers set to kick it away. Chase Krieger back deep on the far side. Jade Queen here on the near side. Is it Sterling Tigers set to kick it away? And a nice deep kick headed towards the end zone. And it breaks it in there for the touchback. Uh, Jade Queen was chasing it down in case he got a bad hop. But So the Beat Turtles will take over at their own 20. The offense hasn't gone very well for the Beat Diggers. And the clock says 729. Third quarter. Beat Diggers will send Queen wide to the near side. Backs in the eye again. Alejandro Maltos Garcia under center. Well and right up the center. He'll get about four and a half yards. A good five-yard carry there by Wellen. Good blocking right up the middle. Hunter Dunn in with the play. He'll flex out to the right side. 
right now, Rob, Rush has got to find some. They've got to find something they can get some momentum going and, and try to control this clock, not well, turn it back over to Sterling again. Well, and Morales in the backfield. Alejandro on a keeper. He's going to lose a couple yards. Wasn't very good blocking out there. He sidestepped one tackler, yeah. but he still hit down short of the line of scrimmage. He designed bootleg left at that time, running to the nearest, the short side of the field. And just no place to go. Lots of lots of penetration there, and lots of Sterling Tigers right there to defend that run. Zach Rutherford in for the, with the play. He'll come to the near side. Queen is going to flex out. He takes the near side hash mark, headed north. Now Alejandro back to pass. He's got a big rush. He's got an open receiver and Morales out to the far side, and it's going to be. Uh, fourth down and about four to go. Nice play, but uh, not enough yards. No, and you know, he was under a lot of pressure at the last minute there. He was able to get rid of that ball and not take a big sack or possibly fumble the ball there and turn it over right away. So, great heads up call or heads up play by Maltos Garcia to get rid of that ball and a great job by Isaac Morales to, to catch it. Hey, Digger's kind of missing Junior Puga on that uh, kicking. It's Nick Wellen Set to kick it away again. Sterling, big rush. Well, and kicks it away. One of his better kicks. It's going to bounce in front of the uh, Sterling receiver. It'll be hit down about the uh, 48 yard line, 47 yard line. 7 yard line. Sterling will take over at that time. Great field position again. Five minutes and 18 seconds to go in the third quarter. Brushed down by a score of 35-21, Sterling in the lead, and they've got their next possession in the third quarter. Tigers come out. One wide receiver to the near side, one to the far side. They've got a slot receiver, two running backs. Put the slot receiver in the motion to the near side and a run to the near side. Good blocking out here and breaking into the clear, finally after about a nine-yard gain. It's Nick Wellen on the tackle. Yeah, Sterling's doing a great job, Rob, of getting down to the next level right away. They're 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 surging off the line of scrimmage. They're getting to our linebackers and getting down to our DBs and picking up big blocks downfield to give these big, big runs for their for their quarterback. Brings up second down at about one. I think that was Harris on the carry. Yep, second and one. Ball at the forty four of the beat diggers. Install it. Shala looks over to uh, Coach Busmonte, calls out the play. Be triggers uh, move away from the line of scrimmage a little bit, and we're going to get a delay a game on the Tigers. So that'll make it second down and six for the Tigers. Move the ball back to the 47. Kind of, a, kind of a short walk off there. 48 yard line. Yeah. Okay. Back to pass is Shala, and he's almost hit. He's hit two times, broke away, breaks clear to the left side, cuts back to the middle, going to have the first down down to the 40 yard line. And. Uh, Let's see who who missed him there. Is it was Queen? Oh, yeah, Tommy Metlin was coming in, as well as um, I think Chase Barnett. Was Chase there Barnett, too. I think, helped clean him up. But uh, Shawless just showed some quick feet there and running around and spinning around, and the way he went for the first down. Yeah. First and ten for the Tigers. Three fifty-seven on the clock. Second period or third period. <laughs> Third quarter. Okay, got a little motion before the snap, but right up the middle for about two yards is uh, Harris. Let's see where they mark it. Looks like second and seven. Set it down inside the uh, 40 to the 37 yard line. And there's a pass to the far side, and 
nice tackle out there by Yvonne Cardin- Cardenas. And, Isaac uh, Harris just bowling his way over Cardenas to pick up the first down and three yards and a first down for Sterling. Keeps the chains moving, keeps the clock going, three minutes and 15 seconds. Yvonne's got his hands full with somebody's way bigger than him out there. Okay, Shala gets him set up, goes into motion, now looks to the coach again. Gets a touchdown wave and a couple taps to the head by Coach Busamonte. So talks to the center, backs up. A little motion by the uh, slot receiver and throws it up deep right towards the end zone and in and out of the hands of the receiver. So it'll be an incomplete pass. Can you pick up a number there, Ron? That was Cardona from Sterling. He just he got behind our, our defensive back on that side and had he re- was able to just reach out and catch that ball. It would have been a touchdown. But good job on the defense of breaking that up the last minute. One of the few players on the Sterling team that's under six foot. <laughs> okay. Wise to the near and far side. Backs at a tee. Hand off right up the middle, and then right up the middle goes uh, running back clear down to the uh, six-yard line. And I think that's Jay on the carry. Isaac Harris. Was it Harris? Isaac Harris on the carry. Ball is now inside the six-yard line. Tigers right back up to the line of scrimmage. Already leading 35-21 over the Diggers. Locked down to about 2.20 here in the third quarter. Stalla with the pass. Got good coverage out there by the beat diggers this time. Double coverage on the big tall receiver. Yeah, they've got to have somebody over the top. And that time, the, that time the safety was able to get back there and give him some coverage. Which I think was Alejandro Maltos Garcia, strong safety. Okay, starting right back up the ball. Now we got three wides to the near side. One running back. Shala looks to the bench, calls out to play. Look at the mismatch over in the corner, and he's going to throw it deep into the end zone. Good coverage. Good inside coverage there by Yvonne Cardenas. He's given up about a foot in height. But, well, Sterling uh, getting really gutsy and going at him two times in a row. I mean, I, I understand that. But they're getting really, you know, Brush has had good defensive coverage that time. I hope, you know, maybe they can pick it off. Got to look for the tallest guy on the field out there. Can't see the numbers. You think if they put the numbers on there, you could see them. There's a handoff right up the middle and breaking tackles into the end zone. Okay, did you catch that number? I think that was Isaac Harris. Isaac Harris, number 24. So, Sterling Tigers really going at it here in the uh, second half. 41 to 21 over the beat diggers. Trying to make it 42. And that kick is blocked. No flags. It's going to stay that way. 41 21 with the Tigers on top of the beat diggers. We'll be back in a moment on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Okay, welcome back. Tigers with three touchdowns after the half. They're up 41 uh, 21 over the beat diggers. Jace Krieger. Jade Queen going back to receive the uh, kickoff. I can see number one out there kind of (laughs) clearly. Okay, kick's going to Krieger. Far side of the field, inside the 10. He cuts up the right side and cuts back with a good tackle there by uh, one of the Tigers. And the beat will take over at their own 24. They haven't got much going here in the second or th- second half. Two, only 2.03 left here in the quarter. 
Queen will come near to the near side. Beat Digger's going north from the far side hash marks. Backs in the T, but well and may have picked up a half a yard. Second down, let's just call it second down 10. Got about a football length is all. Yep. Clock winding inside of a uh, minute 40 here in the third quarter. Hunter Dunn will flex out to the near side. Queen to the far side. Well, and Morales in the backfield. But underneath hand, oh no, that was a fake. Morales with a catch. He's got a first down out across the 40 of the 41. Uh, I thought Morales was on the run. 15 yard pass. <laughs> and the ball just second. come flying out there over the top and dropped right into uh, Morales' hands. So, best play of the second half for the beat diggers, I would think. The ball will move out to the 41. First and 10 diggers. Zach Rutherford in with the play. He'll flex out to the right side. Pete Tigger's moved to the near side hash mark. Queen will flex out over by the Pete Tigger bench. And underneath handoff, Wellen. He drives forward for about three yards. Well Let's see how they mark it. Let's make it second and seven for the Diggers. Ball at 43. Clock winding inside of 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Queen to the near side. He'll go in motion to the edge and a little pitch to the near side. Got a blocker out here. And Queen with the run. Kind of that. No, that was Morales with the run. And he'll move it out. To about the 47, 48 yard line. Pick up it with should, about three. Yep. He went out of bounds, so that'll stop it here with 11.3 seconds on the clock here in the third quarter. Third and three for the Diggers. The ball's setting way ahead of that uh, yard marker over there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're going to go ahead and run the clock, so that'll be the the end of the third quarter with the uh, Tigers ahead 41-21 over the Brush Beat Diggers. We'll be back in a moment on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Welcome back in the Brush Beat Diggers. This will be a big test for them. Third down and a long two as we uh, start the fourth period. 21-41 for the Tigers. Altos Garcia Calling out to play. Now go under center. Get him set. And hand it off right up the middle in first and 10 diggers. Down to the 46 yard line of the Tigers. How about that? I think that was Wellen on the carry. But so they move the yard markers. Clock winding. Hunter Dunn to the far side. Queen will be in the slot to the far side. Beat Diggers at the far side hash marks. And, and oh, pass and it's batted down. Good job by uh, number 19 for Colton Shala. He's a six foot, 180 pound senior tied in and uh, slot, slot back, but he's playing defense there. <laughs> Well, Pete Diggers will send uh, Zach Rutherford out with the play. Clock stopped at 11.32 here in the fourth quarter. Second and ten for the Pete Diggers. Alejandro back, getting a big rush, and throws it short of his receiver. Bounced. Bounced into his receiver. So that's going to bring third and ten for the beat diggers. Is 
Jack Rutherford comes off a little slow, so we'll send out to Edgar Escalante with the play. Edgar uh, Jr. at 145 pounds running back. He'll flex out to the far side right over in front of the Sterling bench. Queen will be in his slot. He'll come to the near side in motion. Heads down the field. Good pass protection for a little bit by Maltos Garcia, but he's running out of room and he gets decked. And a personal That's foul late hit. Roughing the quarterback there. Oh no, are they going to call it intentional grounding? Yep. I thought they was going to get him for the hit to the it head it there. Close too. It looked like it should have been that. But. Yeah, but they're going to call that on the beat diggers. And march off a big one here back to the 46-yard line of the beat diggers. So that'll be fourth down. Loss it down on that. Pete Digger send out the uh, punt team. Well and back to kick it away to somebody with the shiny numbers on their suit. Low snap, but Wellen gets it up. Nice high kick, fair catch called for and bobbled, but now caught by the Sterling Tiger. I think that's uh, 24 on the Isaac Harris receiving that punt. Bait diggers got a first down inside of Tiger territory and then went backwards. So Tigers take over at 11:15 uh, here in the fourth period. Fourth quarter. Okay. Uh, two wide receivers, they seem to like that with the two backs. Handoff right up the middle, cutting out to the far side, breaking a tackle. The ball comes free. You got I, think receiver, the I think the runner was uh, down, but he, uh, he, now he's popping up. Well, if that's Harris. Uh, there's a two on the number, but uh, might have been... Grant Bramer. <clears throat> uh, let's give him about a gain of almost four here. Ball it to 31. Excuse me. 26. Tigers moving around in a formation. Two wideouts, slot back, hand off right up the middle, and finally hit down just short of the Harris, the ball carrier, Morales, the tackler. But it's going to bring up third and short for the Tigers. No, they're giving you first down on that. Tigers right back up the line of scrimmage. Up by 20. And running back hit in the background, backfield. <laughs> no gain there at all. Nice job. Let's see who's that. Is that Metlin on the tackle, I think. We have our prayers for uh, the Metlin family and his brother Ben. He's Got some health problems. We're all thinking about the Matlin family. Okay, Sterling right back up the line of scrimmage. The two wideouts, two running backs, kind of in a wishbone look. And Shala back to pass. Yeah. And almost intercepting and almost, almost caught. caught. First down. <laughs> there by uh, number five, that's Tucker Myers. That uh, ball about fell in his hands, so it's just going to end up uh, third down and 11 for the Tigers. Good coverage that time by the Beat Diggers. I think that was Queen that knocked it away, but 
Now the Tigers come out with three whites to the near side, two wide outs to the far side. Well, one one of those may be tears. I thought we were going to get caught for offsides yeah. when the lineman got up and ran. We're now we're going to have the pass to the near side, but it was a little too tall. So Harris needed to be about 6'9 on that one. That brings a fourth down at about 11 with 9 minutes and 31 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Ron Elbow along with Rob Hastings. Rush beat Diggers Rob down by a score of 41 to 21. And one of the few times the uh, Tigers have punted away or have they tonight? Um, I'm not sure. That's the second time they punted tonight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Isaac Morales goes deep. He'll set up about his own 35. Is it? Kick's going to land a little short of him, and he's just going to let it roll. He's going to roll right to the 35. So Brush will take over first down and 10 from their own 35-yard line. Down 41 to 21, 924 on the clock. Well, they get set up. How about Willie Co Willow Coffee and Bake Shop? Get a delicious treat, breakfast or lunch option to make the day better. They're on Edison Street in Brush. Right there by Ray Street. We got a number here. I got to look that up. It's like 125 or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Queen will flex out to the near side. Backs in a T. And back to pass. Alejandro's got a receiver right in the middle. It's probably Hunter Dunn, I think. Or excuse me. Uh, I still can't see. It's Luke Seawall there on the reception a little behind him he got his hands on it but couldn't pull it in so it'll be second down and 10 to beat diggers at their own 35. clock down to 9 20 it stopped on that play and the hand off to the near side well and not much there Tigers closed on that pretty quick. So it's going to be third and nine for the Diggers from their own 36. Rutherford in with the play. He'll come to the near side. Beat Diggers right in the middle of the field, headed south. Queen will flex way out over by the Tiger bench. Alejandro back to pass, throws it in the middle. Oh, my goodness. That Rutherford just got decked. There was three players there. The ball bounced away from him. But Alejandro put put a little mustard on that pass. But, but right in Rutherford trip, was... Three guys in coverage here. That's, that's yeah, a pretty it's, dangerous spot. It had been a miracle catch, and he still would have been short of the first down. Punt team comes in. Nick Wellen back to punt it away. Yeah, good snap and almost blocked. And a pretty good kick here. And right up the center. Nice run there. And I think that... Yeah, oh, we get a flag coming way, way late. Not complaining about the numbers out there. I just can't see them, Ron. No, that they're pretty difficult. It was it was bad last week at Fort Lupton with the, the light gray. Yeah. But this is even worse with kind of gold. Uh -oh. Offsetting. Offsetting personal fouls. So. So it'll just officials talking it over. Set the ball down or pick the flag up, and the Tigers will be in great field position at their own 40, 41, 42 yard line. Boy's getting a little frisky out there. Yep, you know, frustration starts to set in. You just got to keep your composure. Don't lose your cool when you're out there. Stay disciplined. That's, a, that's easy to say when somebody's beating you up. 
yep. that's football. That's, that's why they give game. you pads and shoulder pads. Run off the right side for about two yards, right to the 45 for the uh, Tigers. Got four spotters over in the next booth. <laughs> they're trying to figure it out, too. I think they've got binoculars and everything. Okay. Let's call it second seven for the Tigers. Ball at their own 45. And where'd they go? It comes to the near side. It's going to be a first down for the Tigers. Yeah, I didn't. Actually, yeah. he'll be about a yard short, so it'll be breaks up third down and short. Okay, you got a better angle than me, Ron. Yeah, it is just a little bit short. So the Tigers come up. Just two wives, one to the far side. She from the far side is going to get set eventually. And there's a fumble. Beat Diggers have it. Right into Shala's hand. It bounced forward. And one of the beat diggers, that's a nice job Thomas by Metlin. the beat diggers, uh, Thomas Metlin, to get the uh, fumble recovery. So a break for the beat diggers. They'll take over at 7.33 after the fumble. 7.33 left in the game, down by 20. And we'll set it down inside of the Tigers. Let's call it the... Uh, uh, 37 yard line. Okay, underway. Hand off to the second back through. That's Wellen. It gets about uh, almost four yards. Oh, we got a good spot on that one. I still call it second and six for the beat diggers. Hunter Dunn in with the play. He'll flex out to the far side. Peter's right at the near side hash marks. Queen in the slot to the left. Seawald tied into the left side. And they're going to run that way. And now pass. Of, and Queen will have it. He'll be down to about the 40. See, so spun back about five yards by the uh, Sterling defender. What in the world kind of spot was that? He was clear across the 40. Are they saying he ran backwards or what? Uh, Balls the officials the talk about it, line. and they're going to set him down at the 43-yard uh, line instead of the 40. Need an instant replay on that one. <laughs> Queen to the near side. Here's the far side hash mark. And okay, let's see what's going on over here. Officials are going to stop the play. Well, they're going to call offsides on the defense. Kind of a makeup call for that. Last one, maybe. No. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking, folks. Brings it third down and short. Rutherford in with the play. He'll go to the left side. Queen will flex out here to the near side. He gets a lot of exercise running back and forth. And Alejandro with the keeper. And he may have the first down. It's going to be really close. You're going to have to measure that one, Rob. Okay. Keep the clock running and call it fourth down. Fourth down at about two feet. That crown of the field, and it's a little hard to tell exactly where it is. It looks like the uh, ball was close. Okay. It should be just a quick dive with our fullback. Rutherford to the near side. And a quick dive by Wellen, Wellen and he's got the first and ten. Picks up about four yards on that play. Mark it down right on the 35-yard line. First and ten, beat diggers. Clock winding down to five minutes. Counting. 
hunter down in with the play. You move off to the left side. Peter's right on top of the crown there in the center. Queen to the near side. And there's a little pop pass to Queen, but he got bumped to the line of scrimmage. And ball went way over his head. A little bump and run there by the <laughs> defender. <coughs> So that'll stop the clock at 440 with the beat digger still down by 20. 41 21 on the clock. Tigers in the lead. Rutherford to the far side. Queen to the near side. Alejandro back to pass. Oh! Threw it a little bit long to uh, Morales. So it's going to be third and 10 for the diggers. Tigers are going to move uh, three different players in here on defense. It's getting their speed guys out there. Yep, they've got to bring in their. Got to bring in the receiving crew. Throw the ball. Queen will flex out to the far side. Escalante to the near side. Backs in the eye this time. Well in the up back. And a pitch to Morales. He's going to fumble it, grab it, and come forward and get it back to the. Uh, set it down at 32. He's going to end up losing a little bit. I thought he got would get back to the line of scrimmage, but he's going to lose some there. So call it fourth and 12 from the uh, 37. Excuse me. Rutherford in with the play. Clock winding inside of four minutes now. Rutherford to the near side. Queen in the slot near side. And back to pass. A little screen. It throws it up, but it's caught by a Sterling Tiger. He's going to go all the way. Nobody's going to catch him as he'll pick that ball up about the... Uh, 35-yard line, 33, and go all the way. As it was just kind of threw it up there and came right down into the Sterling Tigers' hands, and several beat diggers kind of looked at him fly by. But So that's what 67-yard interception return. Yep. Did anybody get the number? Extra is, point good. Extra point is good. They're running out of numbers over there now. 47-21 with the uh, Tigers on top after that. So with that, let's take a short time out. 3.37 left on the clock. 48-21. Sterling Tigers over the brush. Beat Diggers. Be back in 30 seconds. Okay, welcome back. Tigers set to kick it away with a huge lead. Going towards Queen over on the far side of the field. It bounces in front of him. He's going to have to grab it, pick it up about the uh, five-yard line, and run it out. He does a good job. Gets it out across the 25 to about the 27. They'll you know, set it down there. 3.31 on the clock. You can just take over. No scoring in the second half for the beat diggers. They haven't really been close. Okay. New wide receiver for the beat diggers is Caden Swint. Runs out there. Takes place of Queen. Rutherford will flex out to the far side. Alarondo, Maltos Garcia. No, wait a minute. We've got a new quarterback out there. And that'll be Yvonne Cardenas. Yep. 
he hands it off to uh, number nine, Kyle Wellen. Pete Digger's going to give some of the young guys a little chance here. Edgar Escalante in with the play. Yvonne has the choir huddle going there. Oh, it's second down and eight from the 29. It'll run off to the left side. Nothing doing. Chase Krieger out there, number 34, on the run, but he's going to lose about a half a yard. So it's going to be third down, nine and a half. Yep. Hawk winding, winding, 227 and counting down. Yvonne Cardenas under center. And he runs out to the near side on a keeper. Not, no, no room at all there. He's just going to run out of bounds. Good decision. It designed bootleg right for brush and letting these younger guys get in and get some playing time. I guess, you know, if you can try to find something on a, on a positive note, these young guys are getting some uh, very uh, important playing time at the varsity level so that, you know, they're able to fill in there. But I know that coach would rather have those guys on the bench and having his first team out there playing if he had his choice. But just not the way it's worked out tonight. I think it's uh, Peyton Rose out there to receive the kick for Sterling. And Wellen trying to kick it away. And nice high kick, and uh, Rose is going to let it roll. It's going to roll back into the 28-yard line of the Tigers. Clock down to 203 with the Tigers up 48-21. And we'll start to see a lot of substitutions on the defensive side also like we did on offense. They've got a lot of the younger guys to get in there and play. Um, and so we'll have to catch up with those numbers as we as the rest of the game develops here with two minutes and three seconds to go. Caden Lefevre's trots out short there. Some ball. We're short uh, a couple so players out there. I think he's going to be a safety. Backs. And the B-Tigger's going to have to call time out. Well, Let's talk about some of our friends like AC Ice, crystal clear ice, good for any drink at any time of the year. You can pick up AC Ice at any local grocery or convenience store in northeastern Colorado. That's AC Ice. And this is 1010 KSIR, Brush Fort Morgan, and Sterling. Colorado Plains Medical Centers, CPMC, has experienced experienced physicians and a highly trained surgical team trained in the latest surgical procedures. Explore the, what procedures are possible in your hometown. Colorado Plains Medical Center. Okay. And Sterling See. does the same thing too, Rob. They bring in a lot of their second team, their JV guys to play now. And hand it off right up the middle. Not much there. Good tackle by uh, Taylor. 44, Aaron Taylor, Jr. at 195, playing the defensive end for the beat diggers. Several different numbers out. Joshua Cantu's out there. Uh, number Aaron 50. Taylor, Mark Lopez. Mark Lopez. And um, Escalante's out here at cornerback. Cade Moriarty playing defensive end. Jace Krieger at linebacker. Yvonne Cardenas linebacker. Okay. Tigers two wides to the far side, one to the near side, headed off to number one out there. He breaks up for about three yards, and that'll be Riley Bornoff, sophomore for the Tigers. Caden Fever in there? Yeah, he's in there. Coach Lefevre's son, I assume. Yes. Number 16 out there is ja Jackson Dunker. Sophomore to 145 pounds. That uh, Edgar Escalante, uh, he's the corner here to the near side. Okay, clock inside of 40 seconds to go and a run to the far side. Nice tackle over there. And that's 87 on a tackle. Is that right? Yes, that would be Cade Moriarty playing defense. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I got him written down here in pencil. Cade <laughs> Yeah, he got right up there and tackling for a loss. It's fourth down and uh, 
eight yards for the Tigers for about a two-yard loss on that tackle by Moriarty. Tigers send two whites to the near side. Clock's down inside of eight seconds. And uh, they're going to hand it off. The last play of the game. Quarterback keeper to the near side. Cutting up the middle. And finally hit down as their quarterback. Uh, number 11, Radic McCracken. Freshman. So that'll be the ball game. 48-21. All Tigers in the second half. So... Let's take a short break. We'll be back with more on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Okay, welcome back. Rob Hastings and Ron Albo and uh, Sterling Tigers uh, took it away in the uh, second half. We're tied up 21-21, and we end up here 48-21. to So it was all Sterling Tigers here in the second half. Yes, and big plays, too. I mean, they didn't have to travel very far a lot of times on some of those scoring drives. It was one, two plays and, and 60-some yards at a, at a crack. They were picking up first downs or picking up touchdowns and changing the whole outcome of this game. I know, uh, you know, Brush knew that, said that, you know, that we're looking at the game coming in the second half. Opening up that second half on a, of the defensive stand would be very important for the beat diggers in order to gain some more momentum. And at times, Brush did have some, some pretty good plays. They were able to, you know, get some things going, but uh, just weren't able to put the put the lid on top of it and shut Sterling down and come away with the win. So uh, once again, they're going to go back to the drawing board, and they're going to try to look, look at this film again. They're going to evaluate it, find out where they're, what they need to continue working on and focus on that this year and get ready to travel to Valley next week to take on the Valley Vikings in another Patriot League matchup. So, um, you know, we knew that coming into the season, Rob, it was going to be, there was going to be some tough times. They've got a young team, a lot of inexperienced players here. And, uh, and so having those guys out here at times, you can see where it does kind of, you know, it's not, it's, it hasn't gelled for him like it needs to. You got a freshman quarterback. You know you're going to take your bumps and bruises with him. You just hope that you know as the season goes on, things start to get better for him. And and they did. They were able to put him in some passing situations when he he did really well. He connected on some good passes throughout the year. But he also was under pressure a lot of times. When you're under pressure, good things usually don't happen. So that was some of the things he had to battle with. Yeah, and the beat diggers play hard and uh, sometimes the guys are just bigger and faster and it makes it even tougher but uh, yeah and actually the, the Tigers with 15 seconds scored with 15 seconds left in the uh, first half so they, they just kind of wiped us out from that point. And on. that changed the momentum of the game because they went into halftime knowing that they scored and they get the ball coming out the second half so that was a, a huge momentum uh, changer right there and a swing for the game for them. And, you know, Coach Schwint will never make the excuse about guys being bigger than them and faster than them because you've got to play the game. And he just knows you got to go toe-to-toe with them. He understands where the weaknesses are on his team, and he knows that youth is a huge is a huge factor this year, but he doesn't really make excuses for that. He knows they when they're on the field, they got to come, they got to be ready to play, they got to practice hard, no matter who they're playing and when they're playing. So I know he's not going to let that become an excuse. He knows the reality of it, and the bottom line is, you know, with those guys, they just got to continue working at it. They got to continue. They got to find a way to keep uh, positive. They got to find a way to keep the enthusiasm up there. They got to shake it up and practice a little bit. I know they like to change things up uh, to keep the enthusiasm, keep the excitement. But also know that they're going to be work finding stuff that they can work on to get better. I know this last week they they and as far as the offensive line play goes, they kind of went back to basics again. They they went back to the to breaking it down and running all the all the basic plays. And I know Coach Coach Lefevre was going over uh, you know blocking schemes with the guys. He was asking the guys once again, hey, what kind of problems are you having? What do we need to do? What do I need to do to show you guys? to get you back on the right track. And that was really exciting to see that out here on Tuesday during practice. I was out watching practice. And so I know they focused on the basics, and you could see that a lot of times out here when they were running the plays. That that definitely did help out. Well, Sterling, at halftime, they must they did a good job with their uh, changing things up. They come out with the four wides and mm-hmm. uh, five wides sometimes, stretched everything out. Yeah. and. Uh, made changes there, and then they did a lot better on defense. Uh, beat diggers weren't able to run the ball near like they did in the first half. No, and you know, Sterling's always, I mean, for the last five, six years, Sterling's been known to throw the ball around a lot. They've really focused, they've got a lot of good athletes, and they focus on tossing that ball around, so they're not really a run-oriented team. 
they mix that in once in a while, but they're predominantly pass, you know, a pass happy team, and so then they do a very good job of it. They practice a lot, they put a lot of pressure on a defense, and especially on a young defense like we've got young defensive backs, stuff that they maybe have not seen, and then also just basically being out, you know, outmanned in different situations. Sterling took advantage of that, and it came up big time for him. Okay. Colorado Preps Scoreboard Show with Kevin Schaefer will air at 9.30 on 1010 KSR. Following a brush Beat Digger football with Beat Digger uh, replay airing at 11 o'clock uh, during the this season. So that's kind of interesting. And then we got the Bank of Colorado. We want to talk about them. But before we do that, uh, the post-game show is brought to you by Mr. D's Ace Home Center, a proud supporter of all our area athletes. They'll serve you with all your home, farm, and ranch supplies with three locations to serve you, Sterling, Brush, and Fort Morgan. Got to stop by there today at Fort Morgan store, and I'm sure the Brush uh, guys here and the Sterling guys had a little bets going a little bit. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, they did. <laughs> I won't bring that up when I go in there tomorrow because I need to stop by the Brush room tomorrow, too, and pick up some stuff. Okay, and we've got... Uh, Bank of Colorado, the only bank dedicated to help you make the most of living here. They're not just a, a bank in Colorado, they're Bank of Colorado, proud supporter of local sports and academics. Bank of Colorado. <coughs> want to thank them for all the help they've done uh, for me during all the uh, hailstorms and stuff. They're just uh, been right there for me. I can't say they've been great. Yep. So Lance is... Uh, Coach Wynn? Getting here close. Coach Swint, let's see if I can get the mic turned up here. Test, test. Test, test. <laughs> okay. Okay, Coach, another tough one, but uh, we're just going to, well, put the pads back on, and we got a, a game we should win next week. Yeah, we hope so. You know. Wait, let yeah. me give you my headset. Oh, you, oh okay. Ron's going to give you his. I'm not sure why we're not coming through there. Okay. Yeah, we, we you know we, we felt we came out we played really well early on and and uh, um, you know the, I th I thought we had them pretty confused defensively they they made some great adjustments at halftime and and uh, you know we, we just felt that if we could control the football then their offense isn't on the field and in the second half uh, we didn't do a very good job of it and and it kind of steamrolled and and you know forty eight twenty one yeah that's tough but, uh, Fifteen seconds left in the half. Uh, that big play, and that, it was well set up with those, those three whites and the screens and screens, and then they right. just kind of sucked us into that. Yeah, you know that's you know that's happened three times now, uh, right before the half, where where they, they've gotten uh, a long long touchdowns, and you know part of it is we're playing with some pretty young people. We had two we have two kids that I don't even know if they have their learner's permit playing defensive backfield and. And, uh, you know, they're going to learn from that, though. I mean, you know, those kids, they, they take it hard, and they're going to work hard. And, and uh, here in a couple of years, I, I would have a hard time believing that they're ever going to get uh, get beat deep. But it's growing pains. You know, it's, it's what happens when you're young. And, and we're going to get back after it and, and hopefully improve from there. Well, it's a learning experience for them. It's, it's tough to be out there on that corner. You're on an island all by yourself, and oh, yeah. you, you even talk to the pros, and they say, well, you got to have a short memory. Right. Go after the next one. And that's kind of what I told Yvonne. And, and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, he's playing against an all-state wide receiver, so, yep. I mean, they, you know, they, they do their homework, too. They see that they got a, we got a freshman out there, and they're going to match up their senior on them, and, and they just happened to make a great play, and, and unfortunately it was right before half, and when we had some momentum, and and uh, then we just didn't have no answer for them in the second half. They scored right away. Um, uh, the opening after we kicked off to them, um, once they kicked off to us, we I think we might have went three and out. We had a couple penalties, and and we always talk about we can't we can't make mistakes in our offense because our offense is a grind it out, you know, take seven, eight, nine minutes off the clock, and and then 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 pretty soon they're they're kind of rushing and everything like that. But weren't able to do that in the second half, and as an end result, they uh, kind of put it to us. Okay. Well, that sets us up for next uh, next week. Yep, and, yep, uh, yep, Valley. So we're excited. That'll be uh, Friday, the twelfth. So, and then we'll get we get three more games yeah, to go. Yeah. Uh, 
there's it's it's been a fast season so uh uh you know take a couple days rest up a little bit and get back after it on monday okay sounds good coach thanks for coming up all right thank you guys uh, for all you do that was a little chilly out there too wasn't it you know it wasn't too bad i, I was you know if the rain would have came it would have been bad but <laughs> this is it's 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 fall so it's time for football okay all right thanks for stopping by coach lance went uh Thanks a lot, Coach. And uh, I can't look at the flag, see if it's still blowing, but, boy, we're spoiled inside this uh, Frank Mercer uh, press box. That's just awesome. You know, we've been in a lot of them. And the, the digger one, it's shown a little age, but, uh, I mean, it's well built and nice and toasty in here. Yeah, we're very lucky. So, anyway, the brush beat diggers fall to the Sterling Tigers by a score of 48-21. That'll wrap things up here from Beat Digger Stadium. We look forward to next week's... Uh, game as we travel to Valley to take on the Valley Vikings once again on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com starting at 7 o'clock next Friday night. 7 o'clock from Valley, so get a run up there, and uh, it's always a good trip, and and I hope we have a great game. I yes. think, uh, well, on paper, it sh should be a breeze because uh, Sterling... Uh, one over Valley, fifty-two to six. But I think it'll be a battle. Well, I've it's, learned. Yeah, I've learned over many years. It doesn't matter what it says on paper. You still got to play the game, and uh, the game is. It doesn't matter what they say. You got to play the game. You got to come out and you got to be ready to go. And I know that, as Coach Schwinn said, they're going to go ahead and prepare. They'll work hard again this week and get ready to go against Valley next week, and we'll be ready to roll too. Okay, I want to thank again our. Our sponsors like Equitable Savings and Loan, Buildings by Design, Western Engineering, Stubbs Gas and Oil, State Farm Insurance, and of course Mr. D's and all our great sponsors and all you great listeners out there. I hope you do business with all our sponsors because hometown is where it's at. You don't see big box stores on our, our ad list and uh, we need these businesses to stay busy. I know yep. they're out there to help us all. So thanks again for tuning in. Sterling Tigers win 48-21. Ron, we'll see you next week. All right. Have a well, good week. We'll have a nice ride up the valley. Thank good you guys night, for folks. listening. Have a great week. Okay. Thanks for tuning in to 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Good night.